Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am very excited to have somebody with me this week that has been a gem of a person to get to know, and also somebody who has been in support of this idea kind of since its inception. Uh, he's a touring musician, he's a clothing designer, and one hell of a pedal steel player. Uh, you know, from his clothing brand alongside bandmate Donnie, all the way to guitar grooves on stage and um, some of the best multi-part vocal harmonies in the scene from Connecticut bass band, Eggy, please welcome Jake Brownstein. Thanks for having me. Doing well. Good. I'm glad to hear. Um, I, I want to just say outright that it's very appropriate to have you on so early because a conversation that we had a little ways back uh, when you guys played in Jersey was I kind of brought the idea to you and, you know, we had a, a really nice conversation after the show. And when I mentioned it, you were the first musician that I brought it up to that was fully in support of the idea. So it's, uh, it feels good to have you on now and, uh, I appreciate your support and it's, it's really nice to have you. Of course, man. It's an honor. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I pretty much figure I'll just start out easy and just say, you know, what does mental health mean to you? Mental health to me is just feeling in tune with yourself checking in on yourself and just doing what you can to put yourself in the best position to not only do right by yourself, but do right by the people around you. And um, yeah, it's self-love. It's, it, it's an important thing. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. And I think that it's, it's funny that, a lot of times, because the meaning is different to everybody, you know, it's, it's an interpersonal thing, but we all know that it's important and it's prevalent and it's something to pay attention to. And I feel like it also grows and it changes as we incur people in our lives and as we go through things, whether they be positive, you know, negative, whatever have you, that meaning can change. And it's a beautiful part of the whole thing because it's like you said being in tune with you means being in tune with everything around you also totally you have to be present in your life and everything that's going on because to be in tune with yourself means something different week to week day to day and so to be able to kind of understand yourself and understand your surroundings and everything that you have going on is kind of what allows you to tap in and kind of know what what you need from other people, what you need from yourself in order to know how to navigate all those things. Sure. And yeah, so I guess like how, or I guess going back to an early stage for you, you know, how, when and how did music become an integral part of your life, not even just in the mental health capacity, but as somebody who is ingrained in music and is passionate about it, I'm, I'm curious of how it became such a prevalent thing for you. Yeah, so my dad has always been a musician and a songwriter. And so from like a really young age, music was introduced into my life. And it was kind of just sort of a way for me to be connected with him. And it always seemed like a really amazing thing to do. I've always had my uncle play, both my uncles play music. And so I've always had a strong influence of just the positivity of music. And it just seemed like a fun thing to do. And so I started playing when I was eight years old. So it's been a part of my life for a very long time. And I think that just for a really long time, it was kind of just a, a really good solution to never being bored, to like always have something that I could do that was within my control. And 
I mean, other other than music, I mean, I was skateboarding and stuff from a from a young age and doing that for a long time. And kind we of all always, did. <laughs> yeah, we all did. I, w- I would say, I mean, it's a conversation for another time, but I would say that a lot of the attributes that I found in life I actually learned from skateboarding and not even not even music necessarily. Oh, that's um, super interesting. Yeah. You know, perseverance and self-determination and and just uh, independence and trial and, and trial and error and all those types yeah. of things. I mean, there's so much to unpack about yep. those times of just like falling and getting the only reason why you got up was because of yourself and, you know, differently than guitar where, you know, I feel like guitar people can show you like, this is how you're supposed to play chord. This is the way that your fingers are supposed to be. Um, Skateboarding. It's like people can kind of try and show you, but at the end of the day, like, you kind of have to find your own way to to do it. Like it, it has to register for yourself. And um, and there's a bunch of different ways to achieve like the same trick or or whatever. So, um, but yeah, man, I mean, uh, music was just always something that was there for me. That was always just something that I could do that I responded to really quickly. And s- similar to skateboarding, just like, just overcoming the challenges. And I think that there's something I wasn't so present of when I was younger, but something I'm much more aware of now is like, I think it's a really healthy thing to be able to like track um, growth in such a tangible way. I think that there's so much in life that's so subtle. People say it all the time. It's like, oh, I didn't realize how much you've grown or oh, you lost weight or whatever it is because you're with that person every day or you're looking in the mirror at yourself every day and you look at a photo from yourself two years ago and you're like, whoa. For sure. I didn't realize all that was going on. Yeah. Um, Hindsight's 2020, right? Yeah. and, And so I think that with music, I always love that aspect of it, just the endlessness of it, just how much possibility there was. But within something that is infinite, could see really clearly where I was having growth. And I think that that was like a really important thing for me growing up to like, feel like I was in control of my own outcomes and to be able to see it, see it in an afternoon and be like, I could not do that earlier today and I can do it now. And I think that was a really important thing to have. Yeah, I mean, it sounds I mean, both from from the standpoint of skateboarding, you know, it's it's how many times how bad do you want to learn how to ollie? How many times are you willing to scrape your knees up and just keep getting up? And musically, I I really like how you said that within such a vastness and within such a medium for endless exploration, you can kind of find something concrete and there's some almost some solace within that. And you can even kind of translate that into yourself in the world is, you know, there's so much out there and and there's so much that you haven't explored yet. But when you can go inward, it kind of gives you that stability or at least that place to start from. And yeah, yeah I think that that's, I mean, it really sounds like from both an internal and an external place, music was able, you were able to translate into it as well as it gave it back to you. It seems like it was just like a really reciprocal relationship. Yeah. And, and it's cool to have kind of stumbled into it so innocently. Like I wasn't, I wasn't looking for anything out of it and just Mm -hmm. to have, connected with something that has given so much to me over the course of my life and to now be an adult and be able to kind of unpack and process a lot of those things and realize how much it was doing for me uh, is very cool because when I was eight years old, all my friends were hockey players. They were all part of like the Yale youth league. Right. And, And I wanted to play hockey so bad. I wanted to hang with my friends. It seemed like the coolest thing. I have a late November birthday. So 
it was like approaching that time where people would sign up for for sports for hockey and stuff right my parents were like listen like we could get you a guitar for your birthday or we could sign you up for hockey and even as an eight-year-old i was like oh, i feel like music i could do forever like i can i could do whenever forever and uh what a gift that i mean i would have been the worst hockey player <laughs> <laughs> um uh, but yeah, just to even have come to that conclusion at such a young age, just knowing that it could be a part of what I do for the rest of my life. And then now being 30 years old and looking back and be like, so much, so many lessons I've learned through the process of being a musician and connecting with people over music and just, um, it, it's really been such a blessing. And, and, and it, I can feel that when, when you talk about it, you know, there's a sense of, I think you and I are very similar in a way that you can hear when there's passion behind something that means something to you. You know, you saw longevity in music because it meant something to you. And I, I think back to that same conversation that I mentioned at the beginning of, of the episode where I remember something specific that you said that really kind of opened my eyes up to the writing and the creation aspect of music for you. And it was, it's, it's been a learning curve to understand that something that came out of me means something to somebody else. And I thought, you know, on the surface, that's understandable. But when you go a little deeper, when you can bear yourself and somebody else can grab onto that, there's a, a real tangible connection. And that also drives you further because you're taking what's inside and, and getting it out to people and people are listening and people hear it. And I think that that kind of speaks to, I'm intrigued to know if you see a difference in how music affects your mental health from both, from both sides of the guardrail, you know, as a, a fan and as a music lover and somebody who grew up with those influences versus now being the guy on stage, being the guy that people are following around. I mean, I've seen you plenty of places around the country and I'm yeah. excited to continue to do so. And I'm just so intrigued as to if you see if they affect you differently or if they're kind of cohesive in a way. Um, I'm a big believer that like your input affects your output. So I think what I've been able to absorb as a music lover and a fan and going to concerts has always like directly influenced what's coming out of me. And so it is kind of like a, a cycle of um, what whatever I'm drawn to as a music lover is is what always directly channels kind of where where I go with it myself and that's both in a literal sense of like oh I'm really into this kind of music right now and so this is showing up in what I like to do but even uh just in a more spiritual sense that it's it being able to be present and to go to a concert and feel the connection that music has to me and and how much it affects me in my life and what a, what like a motivating place like a lot of a lot of life decisions that I've made I mean when I decided to to quit my job and do music full time like that was right after going to a music festival and being like what am i doing you know so a lot yeah. of like <laughs> changes um came and, and and so i like to believe that these same sort of things are happening within the audiences at at our shows and so to 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 on to honor that you know to honor what it means to people is is super important i think that that has a huge influence on just how we approach 
being being a part of the bigger bigger world of music yeah i think that you're you're definitely right there and i think that it's 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 really cool to watch you know i've known you for a couple of years now and watching your growth not just the band but you in particular and and in our conversations it really seems like the further you go out on the road and the more you have these interactions and see what the music is doing to other people too is really heavily translating back into you and i think that you know when i when i watch you guys on stage it feels like a family you guys don't just feel i mean I've seen a lot of bands in my time. I've seen a lot of different types of music all the way from, I mean, Nile Rogers to Wu Tang to, to Bob Weir, like you, the, the spectrum is broad, mm -hmm. but the thing that I've always connected with the most with you guys, aside from, I mean, of course the talent and genuinely the vocal harmonies are unique and, and they're, they resonate because it's, it's, it's like a calming sound too. It just sounds vocally there and very well put together, but you guys just feel like a family and you guys feel like friends. You know, it's not, I feel like sometimes people feel like they need to portray something on stage or they feel like they have to adhere to an opinion of the masses. You guys just really are yourselves. And I think that that really translate, uh, it translates to your audience. And I think that there's a really cool symbiotic relationship between you guys and your fans. I think that being one of them, of course, but what I see from my friends that love you guys and people that go to your shows and it feels good to go. It's not just going for it's people that are seeking something or people that are looking for that familial vibe. And I think you guys really translate that well. And being such good friends together, I'm so, I mean, I've hung out with you guys all as a group and it's fun and it's, you know, it's, it's, you guys joke around a lot and it's, it just feels good. It's a fun place to be. So in terms of them and the touring life itself, how does being on the road so much and being out there, even though you're having these amazing transformative experiences and conversations with, I mean, I know you recently got, went to Mississippi for the first time, you know, and that was yeah. a very fun part of the soundboard to listen to. And, and you know, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 like it was, it was, it was fun, but yeah, I feel like people would be intrigued to see how the touring life specifically affects you in a mental health capacity. You know, do you have to develop tools to kind of stay sane while you're out for such these long stretches? And, and I think that I could probably say that you have a good communication with your bandmates and stuff. And I'm sure that that helps you too. But yeah, as far as a touring I mean, you're an, you are a road warrior guy and I'm yeah. curious that people would probably love to hear about how that affects you on a, on a day to day when you wake up in a state that you're like, wait, where are we on Tuesday? You know? like <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I feel very fortunate that I have the opportunity to, to do what I love with people that I love. And so there's a really strong comfort in that, uh, that we all support one another. And we've always been very vulnerable with each other. So we can really tell where each other are at and try and meet each other where, where, I mean, it's a, it's a family, it's a relationship, it's a marriage, it's, it's sure. all encompassing. So, um, to that, I would say being able to be alongside people that really understand one another and to have a supportive crew of people that like breathe life and energy and joy into what we do that are that we surround ourselves with um, 
and my my now wife i mean i've been with katie for 10 years so she's been a part of the story since there's been a story mm -hmm. um and having her support is it allows me to fully enjoy uh and be present in those moments because i have the support and respect and i mean for me and probably most musicians could agree that have a partner that's back home i mean they're 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 our life source so much mm. of how we're able to feel good about because we know we're making an impact and we know that we're connecting with people on a way that's important and it's meaningful and it's good for the world but it doesn't mean that it's not hard to be away from your person and and, and people that you love or your family or the amount of texts that i get of family get togethers that it's like oh man don't even text me because <laughs> it hurt it hurts to be like i'm yeah. not going to be able to do this and so for all those reasons like um i certainly have my days of just like thinking about the future and things that I want to be around for and thinking about things that have happened that I wish I was there for. Um, but I don't feel alone. And I feel like that's a gift that there are a lot of people that are going through what I'm going through, uh, not just within my band, but just within the musical community. And I think being able to take the uniqueness out of what musicians go through and just be like, everyone has their own version of that. I mean, the road can be crazy for a lot of different reasons that you're waking up somewhere different. It's hard to get into a routine, uh, especially at this level that, you know, we're not on a bus. We're so our sleep is always crazy. We're doing a mm -hmm. lot of late night drives. It's hard to work out. It's hard to know exactly what you're going to eat and like, stick to a strict schedule with all that type of stuff. And, and for all those reasons, things could be crazy on the road. And, and, um, and you got to kind of look for consistencies uh, elsewhere, whether it's just your communication and being able to reach out to people that aren't on the road and, and stay up with, with the, those people, or to be able to, to find those moments within a day to just do something for yourself. Uh, but I would say overall, like, I, I feel very fortunate that like, um, the good days far exceed any, any challenge, challenging days. And again, to take the uniqueness out of it, I mean, we all go through musicians, um, but anybody doing anything, anybody that's striving for something that takes perseverance and challenge and, we all go through stuff. And so I, I, I always appreciate that people are like understanding of like the challenges of being on the road. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know what else I would do uh, if, if it's I'm, I'm pursuing my purpose. And so right. what, a what gratitude is the, is the motivator. It's, it's, it's the thing that, you can always look around and feel like, oh, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. And and for whatever reason, I found myself in a place where like night after night, people are like giving their hearts to me in a way that's very vulnerable and it's very genuine. And like, of course you want to feel love from people um, that are closest to you, but uh man, like I, I'll never feel alone. I'll never, I'll never feel unsupported or, uh, so for my mental health, I mean, I really take a lot of joy in being out on the road because for whatever reason, I found myself in a place where people say the nicest stuff that they could probably say to anybody, to me, sure, to my band. And and to see that ripple to people in the audience where it's like, I'm, I'm present online. I'm seeing fans that are now connecting and now they've made friendships through. And it, just as I've experienced, like people that I've met at fish, people that I've met at festivals that are a part of my, my life all the time and, and will be a part of my life forever. And so 
it's just a really special, special thing. And so I found myself in an environment where there is a strong community and there is a strong sense of support. And, um, you know, and, um, and I'm grateful because I, I do know that not everybody has that same experience. Like people have bands that are doing incredibly well that, you know, everybody gets along to do the job, but even, even other bands have said to us like, Oh, we could tell how much you guys love each other. Like, yeah, I mean, we, we only like two tours ago stopped sharing beds together. Um, like I would sleep with Donnie and Mike and Alex more than I would, you know, sleep with my partner a lot of times. And so, right, right. So there's a closeness that I don't take for granted because it's allowed me to feel like I'm supported and that I have the opportunity to support people because we are really in tune with each other. And, and like I said, it re it really translates. And I, I think about that day that we were in Martha's Vineyard uh, when you guys opened that show for Pigeons, which was a cool day for me. I mean, it was my 100th, 100th birthday, Pigeon right? show. It was my birthday. I mean, our, your, we're birthday buddies, your wife and I. Yeah. And I think if I remember, I think I won the crane game and I think I gave her yeah. a play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that day, I mean, just think about that. You know, you're on Martha's Vineyard, you're out playing shows. And what did we do? Everybody hung out and we went and hung played in an arcade all day. And it wasn't it didn't feel forced or it didn't feel like bored. It felt like you got that's your friends just hanging out and, and going out and going to do fun stuff. And yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, what was so cool about uh jam cruise is um, sure. We just got back from that and none of us had ever done it before, but like, there's no ego, like there's no, there's no wall behind any, there's no, Oh, we're going to stay in the green room or backstage or, you know, scoot out to the van or to the bus or hotel or whatever whatever you do it's like mm -hmm. um i mean you go to the buffet and like legends are hanging out like george porter and carl denson and just they're there just doing their thing and and everybody was accessible to everybody and uh it was just such a cool environment for for everybody musicians and fans alike that just like you could be so close to for, for, from our perspective be close to musicians that we've wanted to connect with but also to be like man i loved camping at festivals like that was so fun and i would always be like it's nice to go back and it's nice to be in quiet and it's nice to shower, especially if you're playing a set the next day, it's like, you got to recharge, but like, sure, it's still work, <laughs> but there was something that was so, so cool about like, I always know when I'm leaving the festival, like, man, the best stuff is yet to come. Like some of those forever memories are like 4 AM at the campsite, just some shenanigans that are going down or some, late night conversation and reflection and just I as the band has grown like I've always like craved that again mm -hmm. uh, and so to be on the boat it was really really cool to be able to kind of relive those moments uh and share that with great friends and fans and just it was all an open opportunity you could you could share your appreciation for a musician you've wanted to connect with. You could end up jamming with who knows. Um, but you got to really like just chill and, and just hang out with whoever. And, and it was really, really, really special for, for that reason. Is that right. And like you, you got said, to be like, a fan again too. Like you're, yeah. you're in it, you're a part of it. You're a central aspect of what's going on because people are there for you but you're also there for the other people it's yeah. it's just a cohesive it just seemed i've jam cruise is a thing that has been thrown in my face for a long time now and it's something i've never done i'm not a fan of boats but it's i i can respect what jam cruise is to people and 
hearing from my my personal friends, everybody is like, man, the Aggie sets on the boat were great. And it's cool to see it from both sides that they were able to enjoy your presence on the boat for what it meant to them. But you were able to enjoy on an even deeper level what it meant for you. You got to kind of have a bit of that other side back. And I yeah. think that that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Yeah, man, because it's uh, like it's been great going all all these awesome festivals, but like a lot of a lot of musicians like are congregating behind the scenes, like in the artist sure. tent or side stage or whatever, and and it's great, but like uh, it's so nice to just be in the middle of it all and just be accessible i mean that's all that's all i ever wanted to be is as all this grows it's like i i always want to remain accessible and and be there for people and you know have those great conversations because i mean every that's what fuels what we get to do is is being close to like you said being being close to the people that again it's not lost on any of us that it's like the whole reason we get to do what we do is through people's love and support of the music that we make and so i never want to lose touch of who those people are that are creating these opportunities for me and my family and for my friends and it's important yeah i mean it's it's again it's that that give and take, but just because there's a guardrail in between doesn't mean, I mean, you, you, it sounds like you still get just as much joy being in the crowd as you do on the stage. And you might not get that opportunity as often as you once did, but it all, it makes that even that much more special. And yeah. as you're, you're growing and the band is growing, I mean, you're having personal growth and development too. I mean, some things that I've noticed over the years when I started seeing you guys, you didn't use a thumb pick. When I started seeing you guys, you didn't play pedal steel. And I think that within that sense of comfort within your bandmates and the love and support, you've been able to develop talents and skills and move yourself forward. I mean, you, I mean, look at, yeah, you man. know, this, you know, I got in before there was a, a, na a name to the brand, but it's, it's cool to watch you progress as a human inside of a passion that you love because you're serving a purpose for other people but that purpose is also serving you absolutely and i think i i think that there used to be kind of like a negative connotation to because what we do is so communal and like it's it's such a joy that people get to connect with the music uh but i think like somebody somebody like rick rubin has always done a really good job at articulating that like um you kind of have to trust your own instincts like you have to kind of be present first and foremost what it means to you and like that's where it becomes genuine that's where like you're able to be vulnerable and honest and really actually meet people where they're actually getting a good idea of who you are and and kind of where this conversation started with like being in tune with yourself like you really have to focus on what matters most to you and it's not in a selfish way it, it's it's a, it's an I remember talking to you and you were making a lot of videos at the time. And then I remember there was a period of time where you're like, oh, I have to put this down for a little bit because like I have to tap back into like what it means for me because that's that's always what it was. It's like, it, 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 it was always something that was like, hey, these are the things that I'm telling myself. These are the things that I'm trying to keep in mind and be mindful of so that way i can i can be the best version of myself and so so i'm i'm filming myself and i'm putting it out there but it it might as well just be me talking to me right now 
And um, I, I think that that's such a powerful thing is because that's, that's why it's affecting people is because it's, it's, there's no ego involved. Like it's, it's not coming from a place of like knowing any better. It's actually like, we're just, we're just in on the journey with you. Like we're a part of your self discovery. And that's what I think is so amazing about people putting themselves out there is that we all get to experience these things in real time and we get to be a part of people's stories and we get to see how people just work through things in real time. And the fact that you made that stuff available to other people is really powerful. And so I feel, I feel the same way about music is, is, um, or, or anything that I pick up is that it's, it's, it's something that makes me feel closer to me. It's something that makes me feel mm -hmm. like in tune and, and, and for, for my own enjoyment and to navigate my own challenges and my own shortcomings and my own self doubt. And again, like where we started, where it's like, oh, music is a very concrete trackable thing to be like, oh, I couldn't do this. It's like, it's, it's to find my own wins, to be able to find a deeper meaning within myself. And I feel like those are always the artists and the people forget, forget any art form. I mean, those are always the people, no matter what their career is, no matter what their hobbies are that I've always connected to the most is it's just like, you're just doing right by you and in a not not in a selfish way in a way that just like that's how you can give to other people that's how you can give back to your community and 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 be the most present in your relationships and in your conversations and everything like that is because you're like you're following your heart and and that's what makes mm -hmm. that actually available to other people Right. Well, I mean, you can only ever meet somebody else as deeply as you've met yourself, right? Right. There's, there's something in, I mean, everything starts from within us, you know, as far as you go in the world or, or as deep as you go into, into the world, into the universe, whatever, wherever you are, everything starts from within you. And it's important to, you can only be present with other people when you're present with yourself. And you can only give to others the same things that you try to give to yourself. And I think it's really special that in, in the context of music, something that you can give somebody else, the way they interpret it might give you something different. And I'll, I, you know, I'll, I'll use you know, some of your music as an example, my, on my Instagram, my bio is lyrics from watercolor days. Oh, wow. And I think the story, I mean, that's my favorite song that you guys have written. And I think that part of the reason why is be kind is because of the story about it. You know, I've, 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 I, I really resonate with the the meaning behind the song and you i can feel what that song means to you guys as a band and i mean the namesake of the band itself right. it's imperative to who you guys are and it's a fabric of of what you're doing and i think that in a context of mental health you guys are bearing who you are and you're speaking your truth and you're doing it in a medium that people can digest which is great and I mean, you know, we can take a step back for a second too and be like, hey, sometimes you guys are just shredding and people just are are having a blast. You can, there's someone in the back with their eyes closed and there's, but there's also the people that are right up on the rail that, that want to have that face-to-face -face communication. And it means something, it, just like mental health means something different to everybody, your guys' music means something different to everybody. And it's so cool to watch genuine people genuinely be themselves. And I think that's why you guys translate so well to your fans and why people are so 
even even the the relationship you guys have with the fan base it's again it's like a friendly family there's not that division it doesn't it doesn't give that impression off and it never has and i think you know when i go back to i think it was a show you guys did it uh at pst it was like an after show uh like when pigeons and goose was touring a little bit together and I remember Rick came and sat in with you guys for a few songs. And this was before, you know, COVID. This was before uh, before Connecticut became such a prevalent space in the jam scene, uh, clearly. <laughs> but that show, I, re- I remember it was small and intimate. But it didn't just feel small and intimate because of the size of PST. It felt small and intimate because everybody in the room was on the same page. And I think, especially for an after party, for people to come out of one musical setting and go into another, but everybody is in the same place was just something that I I, I remember that show very vividly. And, you know, then watching you guys move up and move on and, and stuff like that has been just awesome watching you guys you know, headline with, you know, open for Mo at the Fillmore was like a big thing. And, you know, when you guys played the foundry that I had that poster is up on one of my walls from that show, because it was, it was me kind of having a realization of a moment in time where I was like, these guys are, they're fucking doing it. And they're the guys that should be doing it and not for any other reason than they're just being themselves. And I think, like I said, with in in particular aspect to watercolor days, m- when you write music, I mean, obviously, mu- writing is cathartic, and and it you know it's a place where you can explore yourself, and you can be honest, and you can be raw with yourself before you ever put it out without intention of interpretation. It's just you, and I'm curious of how much as you've developed your writing style and as you've gotten into other kinds of music, has that ever really changed for you? You know, has it ever, has writing ever become more or less prevalent in terms of being present with you? Um, I would say that writing music has always been the most important part for me of the whole journey it's like we could be killing it on a tour and and have all these awesome opportunities and everything like that but if i don't feel like i'm continuing to create in in it in writing songs i feel like it always weighs on me um but I mean, we talk about mental health and that it's like a, we talk about writing music and it's like uh, it's like a reflection of you. And and I think that there's sometimes like a, like it's romanticized, like how it always comes out. And um, and man, a lot of times it's a struggle because it because it is you and it is you checking in with where you're at. And sometimes you feel like, oh, I haven't. I haven't seen that growth that I've been looking for, or I haven't totally checked in with myself or um, the thing I want to write a song that's like inspiring, or I want to write a song that's uplifting, but like, Hey, I'm not feeling that way right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I've, I've always said that I feel like the songs that you, sometimes the song that you, don't want to write is the song that you probably need to write the most um Mm. stuff that's going on in your life that you're trying to kind of tuck away and and find some other reason to uh, just get past it um sometimes that's the thing that keeps knocking on your door and you're like man like I'm trying to move on from this feeling, but sometimes you really got to look, look deep into it. And um, I mean, writing is a struggle. Uh, sometimes it comes out really nicely. And sometimes it's, 
effortless and it's and it's fun and sometimes it's it's really 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 challenging and that's where i deal with the probably the fullest spectrum of emotion uh is writing and and performing it's like there's plenty of times where people are probably thinking oh wow he's so in tune he's going to this special place and meanwhile i'm i'm in my head just like totally grilling myself thinking that oh, I should have done this or I should have done that or I should have worked more on this thing or or trying to get into the flow and, and feeling when I'm not in the flow and then feeling self-conscious about how do I get there? Am I being authentic? Am I being genuine? Am I taking my... Am I getting in the way of, of other people being able to get to that place because I'm... I'm not breaking through myself and and same thing with writing where it's like like you experience that self-doubt you experience that just um man is that all i have like is is that's all that's left like do i have another one of those songs in me like you know i mean and it's and it's all uh it's it's all a bunch of bs really it's it's <laughs> you know um but I think just the thing that I've found in a lot of aspects of my life is we've kind of grown to be who we are. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get rid of like some of those like initial reactions to things, but how I react to it, being more mindful of the way that my mind works and and where it can go and kind of what my gut reactions to things are and being able to recognize those things well enough to be like, this is how I feel like responding. And this is the way that I'm actually going to respond. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's the thing that I feel like, whether it's relationships or writing music or performing music. Um, I mean, I've played with some of the best players that I've ever heard that hearing them get off stage and be like, man, like I blew it up there. I, and I'm like, how is this? I'm like, if this guy is saying it and he is like one of the best players I've ever heard, um, then why am I going to think that this voice is going to silence for me too? And I think being more comfortable that like we all go through it. We all have moments of feeling like, man, am I full of it? Like, oh, am I, am I, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, and, and just those questions that I think just the journey through writing and the journey through playing music and all of my relationships, it's all just been a, a process of recognizing when it's that other voice and how to navigate it and how to get back on track and know, knowing things that feel like home to me and knowing things that bring me back to feeling grateful and connected and, and more just like problem solving rather like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get rid of those moments, but I can find healthy ways to deal with them that make them not as hard to get through kind of learning to talk to that inner voice as opposed to letting it just blare or scare you yeah yeah because i think i think that i mean i've said it before but when we're at a festival and there's thousands of people and people are watching musicians play on stage i'm like i'm willing to bet my money that the best musician might not even be on that stage. They might not even know that they're a musician, but they weren't given the opportunity to pursue it. They they didn't have the confidence in themselves. They didn't have the support from their parents, like mm. whatever the factor would be um, to allow them to really feel. I mean, I talk to people all the time and like, I could never do that. I'm like, I can say with certainty that you can. Right. Uh, we all We all can. And some things might come more naturally to others i'm i'm not going to argue that but um i mean 
I follow this artist online that he was joking around today on his live stream being like, good thing I didn't die a week ago because I just started painting flowers and I'd never painted flowers before. And now this whole week he's been painting flowers and he's like, that would have never been something that I've done. So, right. That's so, you can, so you can just, you could just start painting flowers, um, you know, and that's, that's how I try and live my life. And some days are easier than others, but, sure. um, but yeah, why not go for something that you've never done before or try something new? I mean, it's, that's the, that's the beauty of, of, of living and, um, not being afraid to be bad at something. Mm -hmm. um, so, so many times you don't get, so like writing a song. I mean, I remember the last song that I wrote that I'm really, really happy with. Um, I was 15 to 20 minutes in and I was like, man, I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. It's not going to come. What am I doing here? I should just go revert back to what I, what I know best, play a song that I already know, play a lick on guitar that feels comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I called one of my friends and I was like, man, I'm really, really struggling here. And then I was looking at the clock and I was like, I've written songs that somehow were 15 minutes and, and, and it turned out great. But like who, you know, when you think of the best songs of all time, like who would, who would be like, Oh yeah, man, they wrote that in 10 minutes. They wrote that in 20 minutes. Um, right. Like, who what cares? <laughs> who, who cares but like you know it's like going to the gym or something it's like and you work out for two weeks and you're like oh i'm not seeing the results that i want to see it's like who would have ever have thought that you would see the results that you want to see in two weeks and so being able to like there's been times where i could have stopped and i kept going and then it all started happening for me and it and and so being able to put those blinders on and know when you're getting in your own way, uh, it, it's a really powerful thing to be able to recognize that because there's a bunch of songs that I, that would not have been written. Uh, there's a bunch of things that would not have been pursued if I, if I just stopped at that initial roadblock. Mm -hmm. you know? It's perseverance and it's, you know, and that's that translates outside of music too. you know, no recognizing when you're standing in your own way in your relationships or recognizing when you're standing in your own way just to stand in your own way, you know, to stay in your comfort zone. And I know I, I've always appreciated that you do pay attention to the things that I make. And in a lot of the stuff that I talk about, I always say you could ask a million questions, but the one that's important is why not? And there's really something to, to, it speaks volumes when you are able to get to a point that you can use that fear as a guide. And if you're scared of something or something makes you nervous, that's usually something to actually go for, you know, the only way out is through. And that's the same with writing. If you stopped, we wouldn't have stuff like El Chavo, like we wouldn't have I wouldn't be able to have watercolor days if you didn't experience what you did and internalize it the way that you did. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's so cool that in music and in just in our lives, the littlest things can, can have such a deep impact and somebody can say one thing that just opens you up and unlock something completely. And oh, okay. I think in the context of music, you know, everybody has comfort music. Everybody has something they put on when they're sad or everybody has that song that they, you know, I, Maurice's latest flame by Elvis is like a song that speaks to me. Cause it's something that I had with my dad when I was younger and hearing bands like goose cover that is it like, it brings your life full circle. And I don't want to ask the question of like, what are your musical influences? Because I'm sure you've answered that question a thousand times. What I want to ask is, how does it make you feel that you are somebody else's comfort music? It's a trip, man. It really is crazy. The, the first time I recognized it, 
was actually last year at Halloween. Um, somebody went up to us. We were we were watching like circles around the sun or something, and and somebody had come come up to us and. Uh, it's not abnormal for people to be like, oh man, like great set or whatever. But um, but he was like, yeah, man, like me and all my friends, like we were listening to you guys at the campsite after the, sh after the, after the fest, you know, after the shows were done, we were hanging out at the campsite till five, six in the morning. And, and we were listening to you guys the whole time. And that was the first time that I like really took in, it's not, probably not the first time that people have said it, but it's the first time that I really t taken in the fact that it's like, wow, like, like, we're not just there for people when we're on stage and playing shows for them. It's like we're we're a part of that drive home during a difficult day. Like we're a part of that celebration when people are hanging out with their best friends and making lifelong memories like uh, people have written some really, really powerful stuff, especially over the last year or even during COVID. A lot of people reaching out being like, man, like you guys were there for us at a time that we had no idea what to do. And so it's an incredibly powerful thing to experience because I know how much that type of stuff means to me and the songs that, I mean, there, there are songs that if I'm not trying to go there, I will skip that song because it will make me cry every time. Or, sure. or uh, like you said, there's, there's just music that has been the soundtrack for my whole life. And and very music is like a is like a smell where it's like it'll bring you right back to mm -hmm. a certain place and um it's it's really special and it's really powerful and kind of the theme of the whole conversation where where we started where it's like oh how cool that music is something playing music is something that you can give to you but it also gives back to you and and i and i really think that's what's so special and I feel very fortunate to have found something that I truly believe is my purpose because um, because it has just given so much to my life and and it's so I feel so fortunate that something that I've found that really affects me and would probably be good enough for me just for the impact that it makes on my day to day and my own personal connection with playing music, the fact that it resonates further. Um, because you talk about being on the road and it's like, yeah, it's hard. Some days you feel like it's a selfish thing um, mm -hmm. that you're out there and you're doing something and not everybody gets to do what they love. And not everybody uh, has had the good fortune of having people in their lives be supportive of it and allow them to pursue these things. And so there's a whole, there's a lot of reasons to feel like, like just a little bit bad about, like you could be grateful for like yourself. Why me? Why, why me, you know, or whatever, yeah. you know, and, and, and luck of the draw that I've got a really, really supportive wife and I've got supportive parents that have always allowed me to, dream and and to to pursue whatever felt important to me and come out to my shows and are there to cheer me on and and friends that I get to play music with that have been a part of my life my life for years and just all these things that um I think other people responding to it is what actually it, that's like the, those are like the affirmations to be like okay like this is I'm not just doing it for myself I'm not just doing it because it's what I know how to do I'm doing it because it, it serves a higher power and mm -hmm. and that's not something that you could always be thinking about because like we've been saying like you have to be in touch with what it means to you to be yeah, able to... and you have to be authentic and... yeah but but it it's definitely something that's not lost on us and on on those difficult days like i always think back to the conversations that i have have had with people that um share just really deeply personal and vulnerable things with me about um 
like that our music has helped them overcome addiction, um, that our music has helped them like grieve and overcome like the feelings of loss or the feelings of uncertainty or depression or any of these things that it's just like, man, I mean, that's, that's, it's kind of why you do it, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, um, yeah, man. But something uh, I, I wanted to bring up uh, that, that, Cause I, cause I, I, I'm a big believer that anyone could do anything that they put their minds to. And I think that a lot of it is mindset and I kind of want to call back this artist. So his name is wizard skull. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've checked him out, but no, I haven't. He, he signed on a lot more on Instagram and kind of like sharing like some of his philosophies and stuff. And something that he says that I really appreciate is um, he's like, He's like, when I was, he used to work all these really bad jobs, even into his forties, like, you know, like getting like $8 an hour and, and being the employee. And he's like, no one ever wants to hear, even if the employee has a good idea of how the company could be better or, or just wants to give advice, like what boss allows that sort of opportunity for the employee. It'd have to be a pretty cool boss. And so For he's sure. like, you know, no one, no one wants to hear what the employee has to say. It's like, hey, this is the job that you're supposed to do. And um, because everything that we're taught, the reason why I bring it up is like everything that we talk about is so personal and it is mm -hmm. vulnerable and it is it is really meaningful stuff. But you also have to get out of your own way. And, and I'm still the person that's going to have self-doubt and I'm still the person that's going to tell myself, oh, I don't know if I have what it takes right now, or I don't know if I'm doing my best or whatever it is. And so I think anything in life, like, so something he had said was, he's like, now that I get to do art for a living, now I get, now that I get to do what I want to be doing, he's like, I need to know when I'm the boss and when I'm the employee. So he's like, I'll write 10 ideas down as a boss. Be like, do a painting of this thing make a video of this thing, whatever, whatever. And he's like, and then as soon as that's done, he's like, I'm back to the employee and I can't question, I can't be there as the employee asking the boss, is this what I should be painting? Because now you're, now you're mm. in this experience, now you're experiencing the self-doubt that you want to say as the boss, oh, I know what's best. I know that I should be, I said I was going to paint Mickey Mouse today, but I, I should have painted Donald Duck, you know? And, and instead, like, you have to be like, well, you have to get through it. You have to get to the other side. You're not the boss right now. You're the employee. You have to do the task at hand. And then once you've done all those things, then you could step back and analyze, like, what you want to do with it. But the amount of songs that I've abandoned halfway through because I decided halfway through when I was experiencing all these things, maybe not even aware of them, that like, oh, I should be doing something else. Oh, this isn't good enough. Oh, I don't know if people are going to like this. Mm -hmm. uh, is this too different than what I normally do? Whatever these these inner voices are telling you, like some of those songs, I'm like, man, I wish when I was in the flow of that song and I was feeling it, I just followed through and I didn't, I didn't give myself so much choice that I could just decide that I'm going to abandon this thing. And so uh, something that's actually been really, really helpful for me in kind of overcoming, like when we talk about mental health or getting in your own way or any of these types of things, something that's been really helpful for me is, is kind of having a little bit more of that mentality to be like, you have to see everything through. Like mm -hmm. you can't, come up with a good idea for a video, get uncomfortable in the process of making it and then decide that you shouldn't do it. Like you have to follow through, finish making the video, then watch it. And if you still feel like, like, oh, I don't want to put this out, I guess you can make that decision then. Like finish that song, like get through that difficult part of learning something new and like don't judge things so critically as it's happening because because 
you're almost always going to get in your own way. And so I, right. I, I've, I've found it to be a really powerful tool to, to know, especially doing something that's like rooted in passion and joy and, and, it's meant to be authentic, but sometimes you could you could bullshit yourself into thinking like, oh, I know what's best when it's like, actually, like you're right. just you're just struggling. You're this. It's hard to make it through this first 15 minutes or you're going on to do a video and you're not exactly sure what you were going to say. And now you're like, oh, like you could convince yourself like, oh, well, it's probably because this isn't what I should be doing right now. And it's like, nah, like you have to make it through. And so dig in. I think that I have been capable of like getting stuck at those places of like being like, oh, well, it's my decision and I could choose that I'm not going to do this. But it's like, ah, maybe maybe you're actually just struggling with it and finding a reason as to why you don't have to go through it anymore. Um, so I just I I I, I say that because. Because some of the things that have meant the most to me uh, afterwards, like, I just had to get through it. Like, I I didn't know what I was making at the time. I didn't know if it was going to be good or not. Like, not every song, sometimes you play a riff and you're like, ooh, this is something. This feels really good. Sometimes you know it in the moment. And sometimes it's only from finishing it. And even if the only thing that you got out of it, maybe you still don't like the song, but maybe all the thing that you got out of it was you're one step closer to that thing that you do like, and you didn't, you didn't bail, like you overcame a uncomfortable feeling. And Persevered. So, yeah, I just say, I say it because, again, we could romanticize art and life and relationships and uh, connections to to be like oh it's all it it's all this beautiful thing and 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 we all know that that's not true and i don't think that mm -hmm. that's it's not always consistently good for anything for anyone and so to be able to to know that it's like every everybody gets hung up everybody gets in their own way we all might have different ways of dealing with it but um yeah, things can mean a lot to me and things can mean a lot to other people, but like not everything that means a lot to me was I even aware of at the time. You know, sometimes I just had to get through it in order to take something out of it. Mm -hmm. I think that that's powerful, man. I think that that's a big lesson in your personal development. And I think that's a big takeaway for the man that you have become in your own right and also something that you can translate into different avenues of of your relationships and you can everybody no matter the medium whether you're a musician or you're a truck driver or you're a guy trying to make a mental health podcast everybody can get in their own way and sometimes the only way out is through and something I think that's important to recognize is that's for everybody. And I think that's a really beautiful perspective. And and to to go in, into a little more of, of what you said about, you know, how how you finally are recognizing where you translate, I want to give you a bit of insight in from a personal perspective, that conversation that I mentioned about how you write, and how you bearing something from you is affecting somebody else. I've taken that into my own writing and, you know, I've dabbled in music a little bit and here and there, and I've posted some stuff online and whatnot, but I finally decided that I want to try to record some of my own stuff. Awesome. And that was directly inspiration from you was, I, why not try to bear a little bit of my, cause music's always been for me. It's always been something that I do for myself. You know, right here, I have my amp and my pedal. Like I have all my stuff, but you don't see it and other people don't. And it's always just been something that was for me. And I've kind of thought about it and I, you know, why can't it be something for somebody else too? So you've inspired me in that right. And I appreciate you greatly for that. 
And what I want to do is I want to just give you open floor to whether it's to your, to your peers and your fellow musicians, to the guys in the crowd, to your friends, to just humans in general. If there's one thing that you currently would want to share with the world, what would it be? I think that what I would share is that it it all works out how it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to work out and that you just have to trust your instincts and trust your gut and i think that like you know i i talked a lot about like the kind of negative inner voice but i think that there is that gut feeling i don't think is just a gut i don't think it's just a feeling i think that that's actually like a divine inner voice that's letting you know when you're on the course and and know knowing when something feels right for you and so i think that just if somebody like you're saying oh i think i'm gonna go record some stuff it's like yeah do that because it's it something inside you is telling you that you should and mm -hmm. to not put so much emphasis on what it's all going to mean afterwards i think that we all create these roadblocks because is this going to yield the results that i that i hope it does um and i just think that at the end of the day that's not really up for us to decide somebody might hear you record something and maybe there's somebody that's like man these lyrics this song it's really resonating with me in a powerful way but maybe somebody sees you just doing it at all. And they're like, that's enough. I don't even need to hear the music in order to be inspired to do this for myself now because, hey, he's putting himself out there and he's putting himself in a vulnerable spot. And why not me? And I think, like you said, like the most important question to ask is why not? And I think that we're all much more in tune with ourselves than we give ourselves credit for. And I think a lot of times it's anxiety and it's fear and it's expectation that get in the way of, of really pursuing these things that are going to matter most to us. And we try and summarize and conclude what something is supposed to be before we've even done it. And that that's what creates fear and that's what creates like being just being self-conscious or being afraid or whatever it may be it's like because you you're putting too much pressure you know you're you're and I so I think the biggest thing that I'm trying to live out in my life um and it's a struggle for me just the same is to just know yourself know who you surround yourself with know that people care about you and people are there for you and people want to see you succeed there are so many times where i'm playing a show and you know we're all online we can make st stuff available to us that we want to see like all these really sweet comments of people saying what matters to us and then there's also the guy that's like these guys suck or whatever <laughs> and it's like and and uh you know, sometimes in, in those worst, worst head spaces, it's like, you could think about that guy who was never going to root you on. But there are so many more people that would love nothing more than see you succeed and see you put yourself out there. And that could be motivation for them to put themselves out there and to try new things. And I just think the world needs people to continue to explore 
what it really means to be vulnerable and 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 we could we could it's not an easy process it really isn't mm -hmm. and it's it's a lifelong journey of uh Casey Musgraves who I love she says healing doesn't happen in a straight line mm -hmm. it's not linear and, and um and it really doesn't you know, it's, it's no, not every day is going to be perfect. Sometimes you're in a moment and you don't even know until it's over. And so I think just that why not mentality um, is, ju is just super crucial because there's so much to discover and there's so much to know and there's so many more people to meet and so many great conversations to have and songs to be written and flowers to be painted and like every, everything everything is everything in life is such an opportunity to 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 know more about yourself to know more about other people and i just think that giving yourself so hard to something is just the most beautiful thing that you can do. It's it's what gives life purpose. It's what gives it meaning. And and it's it's what makes things suck when it doesn't work out or when you lose somebody that's important to you. It's like, it's all, but it's all that love and the fact that you got to have that love and you got to have that experience and you've gotten to know that person or know that thing or whatever. It's just, um, it's a blessing. And we're we're truly, truly blessed to be alive and to have opportunity and to be able to fail and try again and wake up every day and have another chance to go at something and just when it all happens who fucking cares if it if it happens who cares you know i think it really is the experience of going for something or having that conversation doing that thing that you want to do. I think it's just a, it's a, it's, it's a true gift that we should always, always be precious of and be appreciative of. I think that's really beautiful. And I think uh, a good way I can kind of surmise some of that is, you know, while I'm home wherever my love surrounds, I'm also home where love surrounds me too. I love that. Um, yeah, I think this was a really lovely conversation. And I think not only because we've gotten to know each other well, I look forward to doing another one of these in the near future and just going deeper and, and talking more. But it's been really nice to be able to give you some personal insight from how I appreciate you and how I appreciate Eggy and what you guys are doing. And I've just, I tell you every time that I see you guys play, I'm like, I'm just proud of what you guys are doing. I'm proud of watching you guys do exactly what I know that you're capable of. And you in particular has, it's been phenomenal to get to know you and I look forward to continuing to do so. So thanks so much for the time today. And yeah, thanks for being you. Thank you, man. And, um, uh, it's kind of become uh, something I like to say, but I say it because it, it it's it's very true to me and it's very real is that uh, I fully believe that if we're if we're getting anywhere at all, we're we're getting there together. So it's just a it's a true blessing to be on the journey with you. I really appreciate you having me on. Always enjoy our conversations and just excited to see where this goes and this is going to be a cool opportunity for me to get a good look into you know other people and other people that you get to talk with and get to know people better and how they deal with all these types of things and that's mm -hmm. exciting you're doing something really special for a lot of people so well, I, appreci I appreciate that man and uh yeah i'm excited that you are a part of me helping trying to me trying to drive this conversation forward and 
I'm excited to see how people respond to all the things that you said. And I'm going to say this right to you guys and to you, because I say it every time. I believe in you and everything that you do in this life. I love you. And from wherever we go from here is exactly where we're supposed to. So Jake, I love you. And I'm sure we'll talk soon. I'm excited when you guys come back to Colorado in a couple months. I think you guys are here in the second week of April. And yeah, I look very much forward to that and to more conversations like these. So thanks. Thanks a lot. Me too, man. All right, man. Take care.